innovation, uh, intellectual property is a huge uh, concern for, yes. for Canada. We, we develop these great small businesses. We develop this great technology and, and these innovative ideas. It's truly brilliant what we're doing here in Canada. And then it drains to the United States. It drains to Silicon Valley. It drains to Boston. It drains to Haifa. It drains to other parts of the world. What do we need to do to help these businesses stay here? And, uh, and what kind of environment can the federal government create so they stay here? Well, first of all, we're in the knowledge economy. Regardless of what sector you're in, what region, or if you're in Mississauga, let me put some context to this. The S&P 500, the S&P 500, their top 100 companies, 84% of their assets is connected with intangible assets, that's IP. 84% of their valuation is connected to IP. The TSX, top 30, only 42% of the assets are connected to IP, intellectual property. So clearly the US has got it right, and Canada is behind the game on this particularly our small businesses. Only 10% of our small businesses actually have an IP strategy. Actually think through how to generate and create IP and see the benefits of IP. So that's why we launched the first national intellectual property strategy. And there's a couple of components there. One is IP literacy. We just have to tell businesses the importance of IP, generating IP, protecting your idea, making sure that you're a landlord, not somebody who's renting IP, but you're actually the one that's uh, getting the benefit from it. So that type of literacy is really important. Uh, secondly is to create a patent collective to pull patents together so you can get better benefits from that. As you said, the benefits sometimes go to the US when they buy out our companies. And third is to deal with bad actors, trolls. Uh, you've heard company after company, case after case, and I'm not putting the US on the spot here, but there's examples in the US where those companies come in, they uh, target Canadian companies with certain IP, take them to the U.S. courts, and, you know, uh, find a process to get money out of them. Or either they ultimately get the IP or they're able to, uh, uh, able to obtain money from them. So how do you deal with trolls as well? So we came forward with a national IP strategy. Uh, and if you look at the USMCA, a lot of attention on autos, a lot of attention on dairy. But guess where the U.S. was really focused on? IP, right? And what they were able to do is get longer patent term adjustments. So longer IP, essentially. So because the, the landlords, they have more IP, so therefore it benefits their economy, therefore it benefits their businesses. But we understood this well before the trade negotiations started. As mentioned in the opening remarks from my introduction, we introduced the Innovation and Skills Plan several years back, earlier in our mandate. And we did so with the objective of creating Canadian companies that would generate IP, super clusters. One of the key aspects of our governance structure is to make sure you have an IP strategy and a data strategy, both critical in the knowledge economy. So we've embedded these in our programs, we've launched the first national IP strategy, and we want Canada to actually be a country, if you have good ideas and you're curious and you want to do R&D, come here and generate IP here and you see the benefits of IP here as well. So this is going to be a continued focus of ours, and we're just focusing on implementation with a key target on small businesses because that's where the opportunity is.